Opposition Chair Nkoza Zana Lamini Zuma yesterday said Donald Trump's travel ban heralds turbulent times for Africa. Do you agree with this and how should the African Union respond to this move from the U.S. government? Yeah, yes, uh, you know, in the view of uh, the U.S. government engagement with Africa is still uh, early days. You know, we still have to watch and wait and see uh, how the Trump uh, uh, presidency will, will pan, uh, pan out. But for now, there are a lot of issues in Africa, Burundi, uh, which uh, Madame Zuma, uh, you know, uh, didn't uh, address properly. It's not time issue of uh, the president there. Um, uh, other issues uh, on space and security, on climate change, on the environment, on good governance. You know, all the issues that are on the table for the African Union. You know, it's not an easy task, but, uh, you know, I think gradually as uh, the AU evolves, and we are think thinking that we need... Uh, stronger voices, we need stronger personalities to head that organization. I think that, that means the challenges are going to be uh, easier to solve. They are not easy, but they are going to be easier in terms of the personality that person is the chairperson of the Madam well, Zuma did her best, but uh, I think uh, we need to move forward from her, from her time. Ambassador Kinfayomi, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. In other news, West African forces have arrested a senior Gambian army general and seized weapons from the private residence of exiled former ruler Yaya Jami. Officials say General Bora Kali, the head of an early commando unit, had been arrested in neighboring Senegal without giving details. Regional troops had also raided Mr. Jami's residence in his home village of Kanilai, recovering arms and ammunition. General Kali was the former commander of the military camp in Kanilai, where Mr. Jami had planned to go and retire before being forced into exile after refusing to accept defeat in the December 1 election. Four guards for Mr. Jami's wife, Zainab, were also arrested in the border town of Karang in Senegal. Regional forces have been helping President Adama Baru to consolidate his power in the tiny West African nation since Mr. Jami went into exile more than a week ago. In Nigeria, the National Emergency Management Agency has confirmed an explosion at Dalori quarters in Meiduguri, Bornu State. According to the spokesman of the agency, Sani Dati, men of the Civilian Joint Task Force reported that the explosion occurred after a suicide bomber detonated a device inside the Dalori quarters mosque in the early hours of today, killing himself and one worshipper. Our correspondent, Blessing Tuno, has more. Today in Meiduguri, Yet another incident that will have been a huge tragedy has again been averted by a community volunteer who mounted sentry at the entrance of the smogs to protect worshippers in there. He prevented the suicide bomber from gaining entrance in, into the mocks and lost his life in the process. And what we have now is a hole on the wall. The Lori quarters is surrounded by villages that have been sacked by the insurgents, and so we have a lot of IDPs hanging around here. And just across the road is the Dalori IDP camp, the largest in Meiduguri and home to about 23,000 people. Residents of this area are worried and are afraid for their future, and they are demanding that the government gives up security around this area, given the porous nature of this location. From Meiduguri, Lesson Tuno. Channels Television News. The Adama State Ministry of Health, in collaboration with foreign development partners, is intensifying its effort at eradicating polio among children in the state. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Fatima Atiku Abubakar, who is leading the team on the house to house polio immunization exercise, says the program will be done eight times before the year runs out. As with all displaced persons camps, the large number of children in Damari IDP camp at Damao State makes them more susceptible to outbreaks of disease than regular settlements. Polio is one of the scourges that the state government seems determined to prevent, and the outing here has been successful. This immunization was quite successful. I don't even think we have a successful place like we have been getting here in the IDP camp because all the mothers uh, compliance. We don't have any non-compliance from the early age stage to this level. So it's very, very successful. And any hostel we visit, we have a lot of people coming out with their children to get the vaccination. At the Shagari Health Center in Yola South local government area, the State Health Commissioner, Dr. Fatima Atiku Abubakar, joins other workers to administer the polio vaccine. 
The executive secretary of primary health care for this area believes an effective sensitization program is responsible for the large turnout. We had series of meetings with the World Development Committees, with the traditional rulers, local government council, and everything. So the social mobilization is very, very effective. And the information has passed around down everywhere. So, in fact, it's very encouraging. For Dr. Atiku Abubakar, though Adamawa has not recorded any wild polio virus case since 2009, the state cannot afford to relax its vigilance. Luckily, we haven't had any case since um, 2009 till date, and I think um, so far so good. I think the WHO state coordinator will also chip in something, but uh, I know that we haven't recorded any case in Adamawa. The cases that we've had are just in Borno. Medical experts have been dispatched to the 21 local government areas of the state for the week-long program to ensure compliance in this first round of immunization. Reports say all six worshippers killed in Sunday's shooting at a mosque in Canada's Quebec City were of African origin. They include 42-year-old Mamadou Bari and 39-year-old Ibrahima Bari, both brothers born in Guinea. They were described as IT workers with Ibrahima having worked for the province health insurance agency and had four children. Another victim, Mamadou Tanu, was a father of two and was reportedly sending money home to Guinea. The other four victims killed were of Algerian, Tunisian, and Moroccan origin. Jerry Nell, the prominent South African prosecutor who oversaw the conviction of Paralympian Oscar Pistorius and former police chief Jackie Salebi, has resigned from his job. Mr. Nell handed in his resignation yesterday, giving his employers 24 hours' notice. Nicknamed the Pitbull for his aggressive arguments in court, the South African lawyer is one of the most high-profile and successful prosecutors in the country. Mr. Nell achieved international fame when he successfully prosecuted Pistorius for the murder of his girlfriend, River Stinkamp, in 2013. He was also widely praised for getting Celebi, also a former Interpol president, jailed in 2011 for taking bribes worth around 156,000 U.S. dollars. Still to come on Network Africa. A South African artist uses salt as a medium. Please stay with us for details.